Hey guys, what we're going to do in this video is take a look at 60 of the best breakout setups on the daily chart from 1976 to 2022. But we're not just going to look at the chart, I'm going to show you some data behind these stocks as well from their advances. So it's important to understand how do they move after the breakout. Now these are the creme de la creme in terms of the setup and then the trend there afterwards. So I'll then be taking you through data so you can understand what was the average gain before closes below key moving averages? What was the average amount of days in a trade? What was the time value? of the trade as well. This then all feeds in to the trade management aspect. So for me, I think there's four key parts to every single trade. There's number one, identify. Number two, initially control the risk. Number three, mitigate the risk. Number four, optimize the profits. And then in circulating all of that is obviously your mindset as well. As we progress throughout the presentation, you'll see a couple of market smith charts. This is where I'm going to bring in the fundamentals and the technicals to show you the blockbuster fundamentals to be looking out for. Market Smith are the video sponsor. There's a discounted trial available in the comment section below if you are interested. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can super duper quickly screen for these kind of setups. So let's get on into it. So these are the main continuation base patterns that I trade. So it's a combination of flags, triangles, pennants, VCPs, cup with handles, wedge, which you could also think about as a VCP low mid pivot, and a flat base, also known as a Davis box as well. And don't worry, we have got lots and lots of and lots of slides to be going through in terms of the in terms of the setups but I just want to show you the main variation of chart patterns you're going to see throughout this presentation now as we go through 60 of these examples now these are 60 from my chart model database that I think are like creme de la creme is it the top 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 60 ever no it's just ones I was going through and going that's a really really good setup nice trend afterwards let me let me do a video on this let me get the data on it as well to try and help you with your trading but as we go along and we look at the charts there's a couple of key key points that I'd like you to be paying attention to. So think about price action in relation to key moving averages in particular, the 10 day and 21 day EMAs and for the bigger bases, the 50 day SMA at the breakout point because you really want to understand deeply and intuitively how do these leading stocks act? What do they do pre-base, in the base and after the base and understand some statistics around that as well. Tightness in price and type of candlesticks preceding the breakout, which moving averages price find support at pre-base, in the base and post-base. Again, that all feeds into the trade management. So that's the optimizing profits phase of a trade. 52 week highs, blue dot on the relative strength line. Don't worry, I'll explain this when we get into some charts. Volume dry up prior to the breakout, how price trends pre-base and surges in volume. A little subtlety, a little nuance, but we'll talk about that. Lessening volume and pullbacks. This can be both in terms of the base, in terms of uptrends as well. Common shakeout candlesticks that you're going to see in the base. I'm going to take you through a couple of key candlesticks as we get into it. Positive action or positive reaction to the earnings as well is quite important. In summary, repeatable characteristics leading stock, leading stock show. So by the end of this video, maybe it's going to be 45 minutes an hour or something like that have a really deep understanding of what do these leading stocks do what do they do before the base what do they do in the base what do they do after the base what are the characteristics that you continue to see these leading stocks do throughout time so let me just take you through some of the data now I'll just spin forward and just show you so this is what we're going to be looking at okay things like this lots and lots and lots of charts so looking at these and then getting the data for them collecting that data okay and then displaying it in this manner where hopefully it makes sense so you can see the excel the excel spreadsheet here let me take you through some of the key findings so the average initial stop loss for these 60 trades was 3.47% that's roughly where I'd expect it to be coming in somewhere between 3% and 4% basically it came in basically in the middle of that now this is a 10 day EMA a percentage gain before or on the first close below that moving average and then the same for the 21 same for the 50 as well so it was 98.79 percent for the 21 day ema 148 percent dot one three and for the 50 day sma 194 percent i'll summarize all of this in a minute 10 day ema the amount of time that you're in the trade in terms of the candle six so not days in terms of calendar days just in terms of the candle six that's also higher than calculated the time value as well so 10 day ema the average trade duration is 27 six days 21 day average trade duration is 45 days in terms of candle six or bars 50 day sma the average time in the position is 72 days the time value for the 10 day ema so what you're basically doing is you're dividing the the percentage gain by the amount of days that you are in the trade and you're doing that for each trade obviously is four percent for the 21 day ema it's three and a half percent and the time value for the 50 day sma is 2.37 percent don't worry we'll summarize all of this in a minute 
the average risk to reward on the 10 day 35 the 21 day 48 and the 50 day sma is 56 so i actually think this is quite interesting in terms of the data because what you're basically seeing here and again you have to link trading back to your own personality as well so the 10 day ema the percentage grain gain for the creme de la creme is obviously less than the 21 day and it's also less than the 50 day moving average however the time value of the 10 day ema is greater than the 21 which is then greater than the 50 day as as well so depending on your personality depending on how active or not you want to be i think thinking about the key moving averages here and when you start seeing the charts think about that in your personality because obviously if you're using say the 10 day ema you're going to be having to find more trade yes it has a greater time value but you're going to have to try and find more trading opportunities rather than say the 50 day moving average where you're sitting in positions for for much longer so i don't think there's a kind of best here in terms of this is the absolute best to best to use i think much of it actually depends on your personality for me i will use a combination of all of these more commonly i will use the 10 day ema and also the 21 day ema to help guide decisions if i think the stock is getting extended from the 10 day ema i will choke off some or all of the position by going lower the bar lower the bar lower the bar as i've spoken about in other videos but there's also times where i will use the 50 day moving average and we'll cover that in a couple of slides time this here is just another the study that I did which this time here is looking at 500 breakouts and recording the statistics on closes below a stock's 10 day EMA and the 21 day EMA from the breakout. Now, these setups included good, great, and amazing, whereas this study here is just basically amazing. The creme de la creme, if you, uh, if you like. But you can see here the highlights are basically the average close below the 10 day EMA is 28.8. 2% and the average close below the 21 EMA is 42%. But again, there's a time value element to be thinking about in your personality as well. Obviously, if you're managing positions on the 10 day, you're going to have to find more trading opportunities because you're going to be in trade for a shorter period of time relative to, say, the 21 or the 50 as, um, as well. So let's start going and as i was saying i will sometimes use the 50 day moving average now most of the time i will use the 10 day which is going to be this black line here we've got a key over here for the moving averages so i will use the black line as you can see here so this would then be this is the entry here i'll talk about it in a minute but just to summarize this is going to be the entry here and i'm going to show you the vast majority of these setups the entry is going to be on a trigger bar and i'll explain trigger bars shake out demand tails and gap down reverse bars in around about five or six slides time okay but i just want to highlight here so this would be an exit here on the close here and then and the 21 first close below there's going to be an exit here and then first close below the 50 there's going to be an exit here as as well so i will primarily use the 10 and the 21 to help guide selling decisions in my own trading but there are times where i'll keep some back for the 50 day moving average so these are my key considerations to potentially use the 50 day as a trailing stop on some of the position maybe all but some of the position so previous behavior of the stock now that is going to be important we'll talk about that a little bit later how does the stock move previously obviously if it's a relatively new ipo as kex was here in 1976 you don't have that information but looking back at a chart and looking at other breakouts and going, okay, how does this stock trend? Does it trend best using the 10 and the 21 or just one of those moving averages? Or actually, is it best using, say, the 50 day moving average? The type of stock, is it a little bit of a slower stock, more of a grinding stock? This feeds into the behavior of the stock. Proximity to the 50 day SMA on the entry. So you can see here with Kex, it's actually sat on the 10, 21, and also the 50. I'll be more minded to do that. If it's sitting on the 50 on the breakout, where is the stock and the market in the context of their price cycles? So if you think about, you think about Stan Weinstein stage analysis or Richard Wyckoff in the price cycle, I'm sure you're familiar with phase one accumulation, phase two uptrend, phase three top, phase four decline. Where is the stock? Where is the market in the context of that? Is it early in a phase one coming into a phase two uptrend or is it potentially very late in a phase two uptrend? If it's later in a phase two uptrend, I'm going to be more minded to use quicker moving averages. If it's earlier on in terms of a phase one base and potentially there's been a bear market in the major indexes for a year 18 months two years then if it's setting up around its 50 day moving average i may be more apt to be using the 50 day i'll show you axon for instance which i think is the biggest gainer in this study using the 50 day 20 day average daily range percentage new ipo if it's a new ipo maybe i want to be more apt to uh, using the 50 and is there significant insider buying these are some of the key considerations that i will apply whether or not i want to use the 50 so yes the average gain is bigger but obviously the time value is less as well so let's just start going through a couple and i'll just pick out a um 
a couple of really really good ones that I want to be talking about. So this is one here, right? IGT. So a couple of key a couple of key things to be training your pattern recognition to. I think as we go along is actually first and foremost not on the chart itself. It is on the chart, but it's on the bottom of the chart. This is a free tool on TradingView. If you search my name in the indicators, you'll find it. This is a relative strength line. It's not an RSI. It's a relative strength line. So I like trading the strongest stocks in the market. How do you know it's the strongest stock in the market? It's going to have the highest relative strength rankings in the high 90s. I'll show you some software a little bit later on as well but also on trading view here you'll see the blue dots so these are blue dots relative to the index which will be the s p 500 so my view and my belief is the market does not miss the best opportunities and how do we mere mortals find the best opportunities well we pay attention to what is the market's verdict and the market's verdict is the highest relative strength stocks are those stocks that the market likes the most that is my belief so my belief is the market won't miss the best opportunities the best opportunities will display the greatest amount of relative strength so 52 week highs really strong relative strength the rankings really strong rs lines that is what i'm looking for now in particular as well here's a subtle point i know i'm not even talking about the chart yet i'm just rambling on about relative strength but if you see a stock that is basing and you see how it's just hitting multiple 52 week highs see all these blue dots these are 52 week highs versus the index which this is this relative strength line you can change it to different indexes this is set versus the s p 500 do you see how the stock in its base so while it's still basing is hitting 52 week highs this is telling you the stock is extremely, extremely strong. This is one of the strongest sign of strengths you can possibly see. When you get 52 week highs and multiple 52 week highs, obviously the more 52 week highs in the base, the higher indication of strength that you're seeing. It's very logical when you're thinking about it. And you would have heard people talk about the proverbial basketball being held underneath water. So the fact that this stock, it's not going anywhere. It's just consolidating in a sideways manner. I would call this a Darvis box, but it's hitting 52 week high, 52 week high, 52 week high. So this is the weight of the market holding that basketball underneath water so when the weight of the market is lifted so i.e the market stops going up or pulling back or consolidating and starts trending up what do you think the stock is going to do that basketball with the sound effect is going to pop back above water and start trending so this is a really good sign to see these 52 week highs now what i like to look for and i'll explain in a couple slides time is trigger bars which is really really tight bars but as we grow as we go well as we grow as well as traders but as we go as we go through this presentation you start seeing chart after chart after chart after chart from different decades as well notice tightness in price and where are you seeing the tightness in price and what happens with the volume as well this one here, there's a really nice flag Davis box type pattern as um, as well. So can you see the tightness in price? Do you see the tightness on the 10 day EMA? Now something that you're going to learn about is these shake out demand tails. So you see this little tail here and see how it just comes underneath the 10 day EMA being the black line in here. Over here, you see it underneath the 21 day EMA, another shake out to the 21, another shake out coming through in here. So these are things to be training your eyes to the intraday. It can look terrible, but by the end of the session, it's a shake out demand tail designed to shake people out of their position. But again, the 52 week highs coming through. So let's now go into where we're bringing in technicals and fundamentals, because I like combining the two and looking for either proper TML type stocks, that's true market leader stocks, William O'Neill, how to make money in stocks. He wrote the growth stock Bible. It is just the best stock on growth in, in terms of looking at growth stocks. How do you identify growth stock ever written in my view? It is a must, must, must read. But I also do like thinking about leading momentum stocks and also leading theme stocks as well, which potentially don't have blockbuster fundamentals, but they can be very strong in and of their own right. But we'll talk about that in a separate video sometime. So let me just give you the keys to be looking for so these are some of the things that that i that i look for so obviously technical strength ideally i want to stock near all-time high territory 52 week high territory relative strength line just pointing to the stars is very very good so these are the key things and i'll go somewhat in order for how how i'd rank them first and foremost i i am looking at is combination three actually i can't really put one one ahead of the other i'm looking at the earnings the sales and the estimates now let me break that down let's just start with the estimates here institutions love predictability and and they love EPS, so earnings per share ticking up year over year. So if you take a look at Nvidia here, okay, 2017, 77 cents. Okay, 2018, $1.23. 2019, $1.66. And you can see how this is kind of chugging up, right? 2024, $9.60. Estimates up 187% with the guidance up. 2025, $15.03. 57% with the guidance up. This is a $1.1 trillion company with these estimates. Get it? July, 
2023, the EPS being reported $2.70, up 429% year over year. Look at that $2.70 figure versus any of the prior eight quarters or seven quarters that you can see. It is massive. This is really key. So you've got mega estimates coming through that are in all-time high territory, huge earnings coming through, and then take a look at the sales as well. Sales in the most recently reported quarter is $13.5 billion, billion, not million, billion. That's up 101% year over year. Then take a look at the 13.5 billion relative to the prior seven quarters 7 billion, 7 billion, 8 billion, 6 billion, 5 billion, 6 billion, 7 billion, 13 and a half billion. What? So, this is then the point about blockbuster fundamentals. Now, you could add into that as well is the company, and again, it's William Ray, it's how to make money in stocks, the growth of Bible that he wrote is. Think about NVIDIA and involved in a new revolutionary technology being artificial intelligence, AI as well. So it's never just one thing. It's a combination of things of thinking about the fundamentals, thinking about blockbuster TML type stocks, but also then linking it back to the technical action that you are seeing as well. Now, I like to see higher quality funds invested. There's two that I look for in particular. I like to see JP Morgan in there. I also like to see Fidelity. In there, in there as well. They are two of note that I look for. You can then bring in some other things like the RRE, so return on equity, 34% EPS growth rate, that's on a three to five year look back, 31% as well. But if I had to rank the top three, for me, it would be the estimates coming through, ideally in all time high territory with raising guidance as well, blockbuster earnings coming through, blockbuster sales coming through, even better if there's a really good story, new innovative product in a growing market as well being artificial intelligence. Let me take you through another one. This is Celsius. Now, this is not involved in AI. They are a non-alcoholic beverage related company. They do, I wouldn't call it a healthy drink. Like, I'm not sure any energy drink is, is healthy, but it's a little bit more healthy than say like your Red Bulls or your Monster Energies. What I would say is when you're thinking about the fundamentals. Now, I know I'm spending a fair bit of time on this and you kind of thought you were going to be looking at charts. I, I do think it's very important to link the fundamentals and the technicals um, together. Another important consideration as well is when you're looking at this stock here, so this is Celsius, right? Develops and markets functional calorie burning fitness beverages under the Celsius brand in the US. This is currently just in the US. It's not gone global yet. So there's a huge addressable market. That's another thing for I should have mentioned on the NVIDIA slide is huge, huge addressable market, global market, ideally as well that they can just kind of tap into the world. So if you take a look at Celsius here, well, the EPS on a year over year basis, this is going into all time or the yearly EPS expected to be reported is going into all time high territory tick with the estimates up 40%. When we then take a look at the sales and the earnings, it's the same thing as Nvidia. You've got huge quarterly earnings being reported, 344%, 333%. Then if you take a look at the sales, eight quarters ago was 94.9 million. And then in the most recently reported quarter, 325 million. I'm no mathematician, but that there is a very big entry increase, especially when you think on a rate of change basis. So the market doesn't operate in current time. The market operates in future time. It is a discounting mechanism. You've probably heard that you have probably heard that before. So the market will often view things are, are things getting better or are things getting worse? And it's not uncommon to see real kind of growth stocks. You think about um, the Zooms of the world, the Pelotons of the world, they can often top out when things look best, when things look rosy, because it, it can't get any better than this. So the market, again, it operates in future time and it often views things are, are things getting better or are things getting worse? And when things can't get any better, guess what? Things are going to get worse. So it's not uncommon to then see a growth stock actually top out when the earnings are 999%, the sales are up 999% and they're just blowing it out the water. Things then can't get any better. But again, I've covered that in recent videos and we've looked at the likes of uh, Zoom, uh, it was DocuSign, Pelotons of the world as um, as as well, some high quality funds playing around with it. But that's the point that I was going to make. So when you're looking at these stocks here, I think it's also important. So non-alcoholic beverage related company. Have you seen any stocks in the prior 40 years in the same group that have made huge moves? Two come to mind. Coca-Cola, back in the 1970s, 1980s, it was a kind of 1990s when they were going on mega runs, and also Monster Beverage. Go look at Monster Beverage in the early noughties as it came out of the bear market. Take a look at it on the monthly chart in the summer of 2003, and then it goes up about 9,000% before it closes below, well, it's then four, four and a half thousand percent before it closes below, it's monthly 10 EMA. But what you then have as well is you have a company with Celsius for all the points that I've just made, but then you can look back and go, does the market have a love affair with stocks in this group? Have you seen stocks in the group that have gone on huge runs? Coca-Cola, Monster Beverage, okay? It's really good to see. Now, what you're gonna see is some candlesticks. Now, 
pay very close attention to these three candlesticks. This bar here, which is just called a BU1, this bar here, which is called BU2, and this bar here, which is called a BU3. Now this one here, I call these bullish synchronicity candlesticks, or it could also be a gap down reversal bar. This is very similar. And this you'll recognize as a variation of a hammer that I also call a shakeout demand tail. These three bars in developing bases, as we're going to be touching upon, is very, very, very important. And I'll explain it from a supply and demand perspective when we get to some charts. Now you can also have very, very bearish bars as well. So if you see a B1 or a B2 and they're closing below and slicing through key moving averages, that's not usually a good sign. That's where I'll be looking to exit a position. This one here. So these are hammers, belt hold bullish, and then you have tight candles as as well. Now I covered it in the most recently reported, most recently reported video in the most recent video in terms of some of the data on hammers and also a belt hole bullish that I call a gap down reverse bar and shake out demand tails. Okay, but these bars here are very 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 important and ones that I look for around key moving averages. So these are invariably where I'm targeting entries. I'm either targeting it through the high of shake out demand tails or through the high of gap down reverse bars or through the high of what I call trigger bars. These tight bars here. Now I'd also like price to be sat on one. Or or more of the key moving averages as you're going to see on some of the slides but this is not new okay remember these bars here that i was just showing you okay hammers shake out demand tails gap down reversal bars and tight range bars take a look here this is the dow jones and this is going back to 1926 1927 okay at the lows now this is also important when you're looking at bases pay close attention to the lows why it's institutions that create the lows and bases it ain't nigel and dave it ain't retail traders it is institutions that create the lows and bases and they create the lows and in the indexes so this is the dow jones 1926 1927 what type of bars do you see around the lows now why is this important two things large operators require above everything else is liquidity and perceived value now why is it perceived value because like beauty value is in the eye of the beholder so what i perceive as valuable you may not perceive as valuable but fidelity may perceive it as very valuable jp morgan may perceive it as very valuable they may see a lot of liquidity as well so institutions they trade very differently oftentimes to how retail traders trade so if you look at here gap down reversal bar gap down reverse bar marking the lows and now we start to see higher lows forming structural higher lows so see how this is a higher low higher low higher low higher lows are bullish really bullish now you could look at this as a big vcp with so volatility contraction pattern if you've read manavini's books one contraction two contraction three contraction four contraction or if you're kind of a classic technical analysis below you could just view this here you could just draw a straight line and basically go it's just an ascending triangle pretty much there's a little kind of overshoot here but basically it's an ascending triangle which is pretty much what a vcp is right but here shake out the manto shake out the manto shake out the manto and then tight trigger bar coming through here so it's absolutely timeless to mark the low down here underneath the 10 week which is very closely aligned with the 50 day is a gap down reversal bar interesting right nothing strange so then when we start taking a look here you can have different variations so as i was just showing you a couple of slides ago you've got say this bar here a bu1 okay that in terms of this bar here it would open on the low of the bar and it will close on the high of the bar but it's the context well okay you're seeing that bar which is a very bullish bar because price is opening on the low it's closing very strong it couldn't close any stronger in this example here but from a structural perspective where are you seeing it so you see with the dow jones here well we actually see it marks the low in 1926 isn't that interesting or marks the low of this base in 1926 so it basically gaps down here opens on the low so this is the weekly chart so the prior close up here gaps down opens here recovers interesting right so this is a gap down reversal bar whereas this bar here is not a gap down reversal bar why because it actually has a marginal gap up and pushes up so the candle six look very similar but it's the context of where are you seeing it so when we then take a look here this is c this is cohu in 1993 this bar here looks very similar but what is this bar doing well it's got a huge volume coming through and look at the strength of the candle stick it opens on the low pushes up closes strong and it's actually breaking out of this base here in the context of an uptrend so it's not just ah a candlestick that i saw in that in that youtube video it's okay you're seeing that candlestick but where are you seeing that candlestick what's then your interpretation from a supply and demand perspective if you then look over here you've got another similar candlestick but where is it happening well it's on volume it's hitting a 52 week high and it's trying to break out of this base so it's a bullish bar both of them are bullish bars but where are you seeing it in the in the context of the stock where is it in its price cycle where is it in terms of is it pulling down is, does it mark a low of the base is it on a breakout bar from a base so the interpretation can then be different in terms of where are you seeing it from a structural perspective but it's telling you there is then demand present for the stock then you see here some little gap down reverse bars and a really tight trigger bar and then do just pay attention to how do these stocks move what moving averages are they finding support at and then where are you getting kind of slices below and those bearish bars coming through for danger signs livermore will talk about danger signs and danger signals this one here bby 1993 
look at the tightness in price. So tightness in price in these really tight candlesticks I just call trigger bars. Certainly if they're sitting on one or more key moving averages and the volume dries up and it's a strong stock, yeah, 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 right? Is they can really help create asymmetric risk versus reward trade, which I think is really, really important. So what on earth does that mean? It basically means you're trying to risk a dollar to make many multiples of each dollar risk. So you're then trying to risk a dollar to make $5, $10, $20, $30. Some of the best of the best ones, you, you can make 40 times, 50 times your initial risk. Certainly if you're then looking at these really, really tight parts. This one here, this is AN. So just want to touch on this as well. So something that you can often see is you can suddenly see a stock that it, it hasn't really been going anywhere. It hasn't really been doing anything. And then suddenly this happens, like a bar like this happens. And I think this will be split adjusted, but it basically goes from $2 to a high of $5. So the stock goes up over 100% in a pretty short period of time. But this bar here is really sticking out, right? Huge volume coming through, gaps, opens here, pushes up. Now, sometimes this can be on an earnings reaction. So it could be the company, say like an NVIDIA, just reports blockbuster earnings, they raise full year guidance. Or it could be, if it's a biotech, it could be an FDA approval for for a new revolutionary drug that they're going to be able to monetize quickly that doesn't really happen monetizing drugs quickly and uh, that's kind of covid but in terms of in terms of thinking about a company and seeing a bar like this it just seems to like spark something maybe it's a government contract award that's going to significantly change the business outlook for that for that company or something material happens here there's a catalyst that happens here and it's a material change for the company this can be a really really good sign to see if you then get a post earnings base built after this so this then builds a absolute textbook high tight flag so the high tight flag here starts building higher lows and then see the respect that the stock has for generally the black line being the 10 day EMA and the blue line as well the blue line being the 21 catch up then look at the tightness that comes through look how the volume dries up but then you also want to know because stocks don't go up forever so this is why i think there are four parts to every single trade there's number one identify it. there's number two initially control the risk number three is mitigate that risk so take all of the risk out and number four is then optimize the profits so how do you then go about optimizing the profits are you just trying to look for the stock to pop three days and then just sell the position well is that optimal should you be looking to use one or more key moving averages if you are what moving averages should you use Go and do your own research, go and do your own study. So as we're looking at this, yes, it's really important to look at how these stocks base. Look pre-base here, okay? See the powerful nature of this trend. Look at the volume coming through as well. I call this bullish synchronicity. There are widespread candlesticks and large relative volume. There is a clear synchronicity between what price is doing and what volume is doing. Then it's hitting 52 week highs as well. Even better if it's got, say, some of the things that we were talking about with NVIDIA and the likes of Celsius as well. And then it starts basing. Here you get a gap down reverse bar onto the 21. So there's one contraction, two contraction, three contraction. Traction. See how there's a shakeout demand tail that marks the low. And then you get tight, 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 and look how the volume dries up. So tightness and price and low relative volume tells you what about selling, tells you what about supply. There ain't much supply there ain't much selling. So then the question is, okay, how can I then create an asymmetric resistible trade? So I then like looking for gap down reverse bars, shake out demand tails, trigger bars as well. I then link that back into the stock's ADR percentage, which is the average daily range percentage. Thinking about that as a metric, I've covered that in recent recent videos, but then you want to know there afterwards because, okay, it's all well and great and you can get positioned here, but when do you then sell? eventually you're going to have to sell, right? You would have thought eventually you're going to have to sell. So when do you sell? What are what are kind of selling guidelines, trade management guidelines that you can be implementing in your own trading? Interesting stuff, right? Let's go through a couple of others. So let me just show you this because you're looking at these... Um, you're looking at these setups and thinking, wow, this is this is good. Or maybe you're thinking, this crap, I'm going to turn off. But then it's important to know that, okay... When do these breakouts tend to tend to occur? So what I did is looked at three thousand of them, okay. And what I was looking at is the Nasdaq Composite, which is I, which is IXIC. If you're looking for the ticker on, say, a trading view, is IXIC. And I was loading up the monthly 10 EMA. I really like the monthly 10 EMA for the longer term trend. It's just really clean, really simple. What I found is of these three thousand breakouts in the model in the model database that I was looking at for these, when do they occur? What percentage occur above or below the NASDAQ composite when it's above or below its monthly 10 EMA? And well, over 90% of them occurred in a month where the NASDAQ composite closed above its monthly 10 EMA. So this red line here is actually the SMA because I can only get the SMA on Excel, but it's pretty much of a muchness to illustrate the point. So you see when the blue line here being priced, so this is the NASDAQ composite, when it's above its red line here, this is when 90% in essence, 90% of the breakouts of these 3000 are occurring. So having that longer term trend, having the NASDAQ composite above its monthly 10 EMA is going to be very, very, very important. So 
90% pretty much of the 60 breakouts I'm about to show you occurred in a month where the Nasdaq Composite statistically closed above its monthly 10 EMA. So when the Nasdaq Composite is below its monthly 10 EMA, it's going to be much harder going if you're looking at these setups like this. So it's important and you probably want to know, well, what is the percentage of time the Nasdaq Composite closed above its monthly 10 EMA? 74% of the time. So when you're then thinking about these selling rules, obviously they're going to be more effective when the Nasdaq Composite is above its monthly 10 EMA than below its monthly 10 EMA. Let me go find some more interesting ones. So if you want an absolute textbook one for a Davis box, here's a textbook one for a Davis box. And I'll touch upon danger signals as well that we can be looking out for on closes below or after significant uptrend. So this here, this is R, this is RES. Now it's not one that makes the biggest move. It just goes from basically a dollar to a dollar fifty. But in terms of textbook, like absolute textbook Darvis box to illustrate to someone, this is what a textbook Darvis box looks like. This one right here, right? You get good buying coming in pre base. And then it's also, this is a subtlety and a little bit of a nuance. Do you see the rally before the base? So we're not even talking about the base yet, which is an absolute textbook Darvis box. But you see the rally pre base. Do you see a single close below any key moving averages? From this point here, where it gets back above all, do you see a single close below any key moving averages? From this point here to this point here, see a single close? No. Now, why is that important? Why am I rambling on about that? Because if you think about that from a trade management standpoint, it's really important. So if you're going, hmm, I'm thinking about using, say, the 10-day and the 21-day to help guide selling decisions for this stock. Well, if you've noticed pre-base that the stock is just going chop, 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 guess what? In terms of a trade management decision, it's probably not going to be very effective moving averages to use. Why? Because I think the best indication of how a stock is going to act in the future, how did it act in the past? So if you see a stock that's trending pre-base and it's just going chop, 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 chop around these key moving averages after the base, I think it's more likely to go chop, 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 chop. So if you're trying to use the 10 and the 21, which you've just seen, oh, it's just been chopping around all over the place, slicing through them probably not going to be a very effective moving average to use. So that's why I was talking about earlier on in the presentation about using, say, in that instance, the 50 day moving average. And this is about understanding the character, understanding the, the behavior of the stock that you are looking to uh, you are looking to trade. So this is where sometimes the 50 day moving average could be a better moving average to use. Now, obviously, time value is likely to be less on on that one. The gains statistically, as I showed you, are likely to be bigger than the 10 day and the 21 day. But you are going to have to sit for longer periods of time. Does that suit your personality? It does not suit your personality. Again, there's no right and wrong here necessarily. It's just trying to understand your personality and then fitting that into your own trading strategy. But let's now get into this here, right? So really nice clean uptrend, smooth mover before, and then absolute textbook Darvis box, just tightness and price pulls into the 10. That's where you'll see the strongest stocks find support of action. Look how the volume dries up, 52 week high in the base. Remember what we were talking about, basketballs being held underneath water. Then do you remember earlier on that I said, well, I like using the 10 and 21 predominantly, but I will, if I think a stock gets extended, start going lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar, lower the bar on all or part of my stop loss. So what does that look like? Well, you see here, imagine if on this day here, you're like, ah, it's up, what's that? From a dollar to a dollar 40, it's up like 40%. And you're like, ah, stupidly extended here. I'm, I'm just gonna, well, is that optimal? To just randomly go, ah, I think it's extended, I'm just gonna sell it. I don't think it is. I've made that mistake 100 more times, more than 100 more times. But looking at this here, just move your stop loss on all or part of the position or consider it. Think about it. Go back. Look, study these ones. Lower the bar, 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 lower the bar. You're taking out up here. I really like if I think a stock gets extended from the 10, adjusting my stop loss on all or part of the position to lower the bar. So lower the day, lower the day. People often misinterpret it, what I'm saying there. So I'll slow it right down. Moving my stop loss to the low of the bar on all or part of my position. I really can't talk this slow. I have ADHD, I have dyslexia. My brain just goes an absolute million miles, million miles an hour. Let's talk about danger signals actually. So danger signals. So yes, it's all well and good that, okay, the stock is consolidating around, it's 10, 21, 50 SMA, the volume dries up. But remember we looked at earlier those bearish candlesticks. This here, very bearish candlestick, widespread. Now it's widespread on a relative basis. Opens on the high, goes out on the low. Not a good bar. Here, slicing through the 50, opens on the high, goes out on the low. Not a good bar. They are ones where I'm exiting the position. eBay, ridiculously good. VCP here. This is the IPO here. So remember what we were talking about pre-base. So you're looking for footprints of institutions looking to get 
get involved. If you think about eBay back here, it was kind of, I don't know if it was revolutionary technology, but you think about online auctions on the internet, that was pretty new back in 1998 and 1999, right? And then you can visually see, do you visually see the footprints of large operators? Look at the volume here. Do you see it? It's just standing out, literally like a sofa. Like you can't miss that if you know if you know what it is you're looking for. You can't miss that. You can't miss the 52 week highs. You can't miss this trend here. And then it's one contraction, two contraction, three contraction. Back to back, well, it's an inside bar to finish out, and then the prior bar is a shakeout to Manta. This bar over here is what bar? Gap down reversal bar. This bar that marks low here, shakeout to Manta. It's timeless. Let me do a couple of others. You can get them from IPO bases as well. This is basically a textbook Darvis box from, from, its, um, from its IPO. If it's a brand new IPO, I may be more apt to kind of keep some back for the, uh, for the 50 day as well let me go find some ones here okay so this is axon here so this one for the 50 day moving average you can see how the 50 day look how it encapsulates the move now this will be split adjusted 101 times i think but from the breakout here it's under a dollar stock and i don't think this would have been it's split adjusted this time here okay so it's underneath the dollar it's 82 cents and then before it closes below its 50 day moving average it goes out at around about 17 dollars that's a pretty pretty big move right but if you think about this here, think about the context of the market as well. This is 2003. So this is after the market has been in around a two and a half, three year bear market. So in terms of then thinking about the moving averages and thinking about have you potentially got a TML type stock? So a true market leader like an NVIDIA or something like that in this in this present day by the tail. Have you potentially got positioned in TML type stock? And have you done it? Where have you done it in terms of the price cycle? Have you done it after and got positioned in the stock after a two and a half, three year bear market? Or are you four years into a bull market? Because that may factor into your decision making process. So if it's early and it looks like it's potentially early in a new bull market, there's been a bear market for two years, two and a half years, whatever, whatever it may be, I may be more apt to trying to keep some back for the 50 day moving average, which is also the 10 week moving average on the on the weekly chart. So you can see here, this is where it, it, it's not just that easy of thinking, oh, I'm just going to sell it on a close blow the black, right? Like, think about it a little bit more, right? Where is the stock? How many bases do you see in the uptrend? When you start getting here and the stock has gone from split adjusted a dollar up to $6, $7, $8 up here, and you can start counting the bases, you can go, well, one base, two base, three base, fourth base, probably don't want to be using the 50. Maybe I want to be using, say, the 10 or the 21, because statistically the stock is now longer in the two. So there's a lot of different things to be um, thinking about, but I do think trying to get some of these absolute mega home runs is really, really, really important. CLF, another one. Let me go find some um, some interesting ones for you. Google from the IPO. There okay. Tight little inside bar here. Little shake out demand here as as well. So it's really good to see IPOs that don't just tank and then they actually base and they can set these really nice little pivots in here. These inside bars around key moving averages. Even um, even even better. So let me just go and find some interesting ones because we've got 60 of them to go through. So let me pick out some ones that I think are really, really interesting. Uh, that one's pretty interesting. You can see there's loads of them as well. Okay, this will make a good point as well. So again, when you're thinking about moving averages, there's a, so I was schooled in the Wyckoff methodology. So Wyckoff had three laws. He had the law of cause and effect, supply and demand, and effort versus result. So we're going to call, we're going to talk about the law of cause and effect. What does that mean? It basically means the bigger the base. So you think about bases as causality. So the bigger the base, the bigger the cause causality, the bigger the trend, and that could either be an uptrend or a downtrend. So you see Tesla here. Tesla has basically built a base from late 2010 to mid-ish 2013. That there is an almighty cause. See this? I'm just trying to point to it like this. That's an almighty cause. So something else to be thinking about in terms of which moving averages to use is, yes, you can look at the statistical data that I gave you earlier on. You can look at the 500 breakout uh, data as well, but also a bit of common sense here that well, Tesla is potentially coming out of this huge base. Now, obviously, factor it into your personality as well, but it's potentially coming out of this huge base, huge causality here. So maybe I'm very early in Tesla coming out of a big accumulation base or a very big reaccumulation base that is a couple of years in duration. So what moving averages do I want to use? Again, you could then look back at the stock and go, okay, what moving averages work best? And then apply some common sense to go, well, if it's coming out of the 50 and this thing may go on a huge trend, maybe I want to keep some back for the 50, which is going to be this purple line in here as well. So you can see here's the black line, here's the blue line, and here is the purple as well. So Tesla goes from split adjusted around about three dollars before it closes below its 50 day moving average that looks like it's going to be around 11.50 11 dollars or so not a bad move right
Let's do a couple of others. This one here is Pantheon Resources. This is a UK stock. So searches and volume pre-base can be really, really, really good. See, okay, look at the volume coming through. Look at the bullish increase. Now this is tech. But see how the stock pulls back down. Find support on the 21, 21, 21, and then you get these tight bars. So these tight bars, I think, help to create very asymmetric risk reversible trades. Now on some of the leading stocks as well, look at the volume coming through here. They will give you opportunities to add to your position as well by setting subsequent entries subsequent pivots where i can then be looking to uh looking to enter as well but see this bar here <clears throat> it cracks through yes it has a shakeout demand tail but look at the pop in volume and look how the bar opens on the high of the bar closes around about the middle of the bar it's a change of character bar. look at the volume coming through as well so you'll see when the stock is acting right this is another thing to be dialing in the pattern recognition to is when a stock is acting right and when a stock is not acting right and it's understanding when a stock is acting right at specific times so if you're thinking about the context of the price cycle and you're thinking okay stock maybe it's late phase one transitioning into phase two okay no it's in a clear phase two uptrend what are the behavior characteristics you would associate with a leading stock in a phase two uptrend what are then the characteristics you'd associate with a stock topping out what do you tend to see from a price volume relative strength perspective key things to be paying attention to right let's go and do another one oh, this one's pretty good like ridiculously tight bar can just create ridiculously good ridiculously good uh setups this one here so slightly different here this is c this is cgc so this is canopy growth so this is a weed it's a cannabis stock so as i was saying earlier you can get tml type stocks but you can also get thematic stocks as well um so you can get stocks where the market for whatever reason maybe there's a change in the industry maybe for for stocks like this there's a change in legislation whether you think that's right or wrong i don't really care i'm just talking about it as an example here so potentially there's a change in government le legislation maybe it's a specific country maybe it's more worldwide whatever it may be that can change the outlook for this for this company and maybe the earnings and the sales aren't coming through yet but again the market does doesn't operate in present time the market operates over there in future time so what then when you look at this here you could see that oh wow there's a load of cannabis related stocks or there's a load of uranium stocks or there's a load of semiconductor stocks or a load of evs whatever it may be okay this here is then building a really nice base so if there's then a thematic driver behind it as well and you see a lot of the brother and sister stocks so stocks in the same group all setting up at the same time that can be a very powerful indication certainly if they're hitting 52 cars and they set up a base like this but you see here this here change of character bar huge volatility mega volume coming through where is it happening so it's context where are you seeing specific things on the chart really 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 important games workshop one of the best uk stocks in the 20 uh, 2010s this is acb so a little bit later than c than cgc but another cannabis weed stock so look at it powerful uptrend and then gap down reverse bar shake out demand tail tight 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 now clearly here short term extended term lower the bar lower the bar lower the bar potentially or wait for closes amd tesla here really climactic like change of character bar here but once it starts cracking below these key moving averages here here change character so what is the stock doing when it's acting well pre-base in the base in the trend and then when it's topping out as um as well let me go and find uh let me go and find some others this here in terms of a high type flag ridiculously good setup this stock from the covid lows up to the high here i think it's like 800 percent or something like that and then what what does the stock do do you see how orderly the price action is and again i asked you the question earlier of do you see a single close below a key moving averages during the rally no this is creme de la creme this is best of the best stuff see how it just rides its 10 day couple of shake out demand tails shake out demand tail gap down reverse bar and then it starts basing this is a high type flat see the tightness in price so tightness in price low relative volume tells you there's very little selling there's very little supply coming to the market again think about the context here 52 week highs as well it's a stock leader absolutely it's a leader but then you see as the stock starts topping out here do you notice how it's now slicing below key moving averages the bar is opening on the high going out on the low volume is popping up so again what are the characteristics of tml market leading stocks pre-base in the base as they're trending and then when they top out as well that is what you really want to ingrain in your um in your head let me see if we can find maybe one more and then i'll show you how to how to screen for these um stocks as well right huge move shake out demand tail off the 50 in the context of a cup and handle uh marathon huge move as well uh game stock let's do game stock maybe we'll finish with game stock because what is going to be complete a top 60 breakout without game stock right over the last 30 40 years what chart pattern do you see dcp right one contraction two contraction three contraction tight tight volume dries up 52 week highs in the base stocks already a leader before it makes this huge move in here right powers out look at the volume coming through and then as i was saying when you start thinking this stock gets extended 
Low of the day, low of the day, low of the day, low of the day is an effective selling strategy that I use in my own trading. Now, of course, you can just wait for closes below, but if a stock goes up a thousand percent in two weeks, maybe you want to think about it, right? But see the tightness that comes through in here as well. See the base that builds. This is a pretty big causality as well. This is this this here was very well planned and very well executed by whoever did it. And I will leave who whoever did it to your imaginations. Maybe you think it was Wall Street bets. Maybe you think it was some other people. But yeah, that's um I will do Kappa from 2022 into 2023. So this here, I'll just touch upon this as it then ties in something else that I think is pretty significant. So you see all this volume here, okay? Stocks in the doldrums. It's below its 200 day moving average it's in the doldrums, but suddenly what do you see? Interest, right? Look at this. Look at the volume coming through. Huge relative volume, positive price action, bullish synchronicity. There's also a shed ton of insider buying by various different insiders as well. I think it was the C, it was the CEO, the CFO, and a couple of directors as well. So the more insiders buying in close proximity to each other and action like this, tick, 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 tick. Really, really, really good to see. And then the stock pulls in to its 10, bounces, pulls into its 10. So it's a quasi cup and handle type pattern. But then you get an inside bar on the 10, volume dries up as well, shed ton of insider buying coming through. That's really, really good to see. So as we were talking about, there could be, it could be an earnings reaction. It could be a ward of a government contract. If you suddenly see a lot of insiders buying and really positive price action, that can be a bit of a tip off to maybe something is happening here. Now, before the stock line closes below, it's 21 day, goes up 433% from memory. So what I'm now going to do is you're probably looking at these and thinking, wow, that's really good. How on earth do I screen for them? And that's what I'm about to show you. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how quickly and easy it is to find powerful stocks in phase two uptrends. I'm going to do that using my custom built stock screen here. So this is designed as a first initial sieve to put those kind of stocks that we were just looking at in that presentation on your radar. We have five exchanges available. We have India, US, UK, Canada, and also Australia. Now we have free and paid plans available. And if you want the free plan, you can just go to my website, signed up. And you'll see a couple of preset screens, such as the continuation based screen. So I'll show you the continuation based screen. So you just literally need to set it for whatever region you want to do. So I've got India continuation based screen. So what I like to do is set parameters for those type of stocks that I was showing you. So ideally, say above the 200 SMA, above the 50 day moving average as well, set a market cap in there, set a 50 day average volume in there. Obviously, set you need to set the country as, as well. But then I like to filter out via relative strength and I like to look for the strongest stocks first. So this is the relative strength ranking. Now, I will usually do this in one of two ways. I will either set it to relative strength rank on a three month basis to be the highest first, or I will use the relative strength rank on a 12 month basis and set it to the highest first. For the purpose of this, I've set it to the highest relative strength ranking on a 12 month basis first. Now, let me show you how speedy this is. So I'm going to click flex charts here. Now, you can play around with the charts. You can set it to bars. You can have a couple per row. You can have a single one per row if you want them a little bit bigger. You can also just click on it and it will load up trading view for you as um, as well. But you can see we've got the charts on the left and when, then we've got some earnings and sales data on the right. So I'm looking at this stock here, okay, Apar Industries. I think that's how you pronounce it. Apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. And what I've got here, this moving average that you see is the 21 SMA. We just have simple moving averages on our charts at this moment in time. But you see here, there's a shake out demand tail here. There's a nice shake out demand tail here. Then there's an inside bar here and it looks pretty constructive. It looks like it's it's pulling in, it's building a base. Then I'm going to take a look at the fundamentals over here. So when I take a look at the sales first and foremost, well, year over year, I can see that it's up 37%. And if you look around eight quarters ago or seven quarters ago, the sales being reported now are 41 billion relative to 18 billion. As I said, I'm no mathematician, but that there is a big rate of change increase. When I then take a look at the EPS, it's $63 coming through versus 16. Wow, that's another really big rate of change coming through. So this is one that I want to be highlighting. So what I can do is just click this hamburger menu. You can create a watch list. I've just set one here and put it into a watch list. I can then monitor it like this in terms of this visual here, or I can import them into a trading view, a TC2000, a Market Smith, or whatever. Or we've got preset watch lists here as well. So that's one that I want to be keeping on. Again, if you just want to load up trading view chart, click that button there. Trading view will load up in a separate window. Then I could go down and then the very next one here is up. Well potentially a big base going in. Look at the tightness here, right? Look how well, look how nice this stock got here. Then look at the trend. So undercuts at 21, rec reclaims, there's a couple of bullish bars here. And now it's starting, there looks like there's a couple of gap down reversal bars in here. Looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? When I take a look at the sales, okay, good. 10 billion relative to 5 billion. That's a really nice thing. Really nice quarterly increase that I'm seeing here. Earnings aren't as strong, but uh, technically it's pretty strong. So maybe I want to be taking a look at this one as well. So then I can just put that into, uh, into a watch list. And it's literally that quick to just be scanning through. Look at this tightness coming 
through in here. These are the kind of ones that I want to find. Look at the tightness coming through and then the explosive move up and out of there. So that is it, guys. I wrap it up there. Remember, there's three plans of this if you want to go and test out what I've just been uh, showing you. You can go and do it across different regions as well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.